Hey everybody, welcome to Creative Frequencies. I am your host, Chris Vaglio, and this is the show where we have conversations with creative professionals from all walks of life. So if that kind of stuff is your jam, and then listen to my next guest. Let's rock. So I'm here. I'm ready to talk some shit with Paula. Let's talk some shit on and rock it. We're going to talk some shit while I'm rocking it. That's right. That's right. We're going to rock it and we're going to talk some shit all at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know a, a little bit about talk shit with Pig because I'm listening. I, I listen. I listen. I listen. I know you started the show back at the basically at the start of the pandemic. So what would Paula of 2024 tell Paula of podcasting your, your podcasting self from 2020 when you started your first episode was the coronavirus Cardi B <laughs> talking coronavirus. What would you what would you say to yourself now? Um, <laughs> it's funny how you brought up Cardi B because, you know, that was uh, SEO, but that was the first time I actually used kind of like a, a snippet of how she there's certain sayings Cardi B says that they yeah. just and it was going viral and I used it. And then later on, I found that, oh, I could be sued for that shit. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, at this point, nobody knows me, so... You know what? You, 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 you do it and ask her forgiveness. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, I got a feeling Cardi B has much bigger fish to fry, but you know what? Exactly. Hey, you know what? And if she goes after you, you could turn it into content. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That would be some. That would be some awesome content. Yeah, then you'd have some real shit to talk about. <laughs> I, I'll be. I'll be the next Risa on TikTok because I'd make it into right. a TikTok now and, and turn it into all from receiving the letter to battling it. But yeah. Um, <laughs> but back to your question. So literally, I would tell um, all out of twenty twenty two was stressing about uh, doing this podcast is. Don't 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 worry about the the little stuff, right? I right. was I was editing to perfection, like the call, the everything, which took me like three hours. And these days, when I hear a call, I'm <laughs> like, actually, I like it in there because we are humans, right? We right. call. This is how we talk. We're not perfect, so why right. why would somebody assume because I'm on a podcast I should speak proper than how I normally talk? So that and also, um, I was so worried if I'd ever have guest on my show i was like who's gonna want to come to 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 talk shit but it's funny when people realize you have a podcast and um again everybody's experience is different my podcast is called talk she with p so when i tell people i have a podcast talk called talk she with p the first thing you hear is i want to talk some shit with you <laughs> so it, it has become that i have so many people want to come to my podcast where now I'm like, do you even know what this podcast is about? Like, what do you want to come talk about? It's like, I don't know. As long as I'm talking shit with you, I'm like, you know, it's not literally like we're not really just shit talking. <laughs> but, <laughs> but cool. So I went from being in 2020 worried about if I ever have enough guests or people want to come to a show to now receiving emails and people just filling out the form finding the form and sending their pitches and their media kits like i want to be on your right. show i want to be on your show and i'm just like eh, no. <laughs> no no see now now yeah. and i'm very picky right now now you're gatekeeping <laughs> now you're gatekeeping before you were like anybody could be on my show just i just need get i just need content i need people to come on the show now i'm like wait a second you're not past now. see in four years you're now you know velvet rope Right? VIP. <laughs> That's the realest shit ever because I remember when in, in season one, and again, I uh, I ended up rebranding my podcast uh, right. three years ago in 2022. I rebranded. Um, but when I started, I was just taking any guess. You have a, you have a mental health uh, story. You want to talk about your mental health? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, bring it on calm. I was just accepting a variety of mental health. And then you start taking it serious and getting in these rooms and people are telling you constantly. The first thing I had in the first two years of my podcasting was niche down, niching, niching. You got to niche down. Yeah. I hated it. I was like, I don't even fucking know what I'm doing. Why are you going to make me niche down? Yo, who, who the hell am I even niching down to? I, I don't even know what I'm doing. I just want, I just want, I just want a podcast. And and talk. Then, I swear. 
even they're asking me about who is your persona, who is this? I'm like, I don't care. What the hell does that have to do with what? I just want to share stories and have this conversation. Yeah. So, <laughs> but eventually, eventually you realize that you do need to somehow niche down or realize what your purpose is or who your persona is. So when I niche down into and turned it into, yes, I still want to share mental health stories and journeys, but I want to focus on creativity because now I'm in this world of creative. I'm building a brand. I I am more aware of what I'm doing and what I want it to be. And right. I, I've gotten a little cocky, you know, because now the yeah. ego is grows like, oh, you're doing this shit, you know? <laughs> oh, Yeah. <laughs> So I became that person where when now people reach out, I'm like, is this on brand with me? Are you really a right? Yes, you might have a mental health story, but does it go with what my show is? Because there's a lot of mental health stories. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I've become more aware and not necessarily get keeping, but you know, you got to protect your brand because yeah. that's your baby, right? You can't just, just Absolutely. we talk about sponsorship and everything. You can't have a sponsorship you are you're promoting something that you don't agree with, but you're promoting it on your podcast, right? right? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 those are all very well said, actually. I mean, and and I know we, we can laugh about it, and it is, it's funny, right? Because you think back where you started, right? Like, I, I went back and I, I re-listened to your first three episodes just to prepare, because, I listen, and I would say if anybody was going to interview me, like, go back and listen to my episodes of. You know, whether it's Song Swap Showdown or when the show used to be called Rocket Live, like go back and listen to those episodes because it's like I'm like all over the place and like even a mishmash of guests. But like because I just wanted to podcast, I just wanted to talk with people. But, you know, you make a really great point as you grow and as you learn and you said a few key things in there, your personal brand, you want to be protective about it. And on top of that, right, as you begin to grow an audience, right, what are the things what are the stories what are the people your audience wants to hear from and plus what fits in with you right mm -hmm. so exactly like when you start out you're like hey i'm gonna do anything it's like being in a band like when you first play band, i don't care i'm gonna play birthday parties backyards bar basements mitzvah. bar mitzvahs Nothing. legion halls <laughs> yeah burger king parking lots like whatever but eventually now you go well okay you start to grow you learn you go, all right we're not gonna do that anymore now we're gonna you know we're gonna play proper shows we're gonna get paid for what we're doing like you begin to build up and that's over the course of the years that you've been doing it that's what you figured out like any creator right anybody that starts a project you start here and where you wind up because you've learned and you've grown so i would love to know from you paula one what... minute before, before you, we move on i just want to add something on that and there's also knowing that i think sometimes some people also end up getting so confused or lost is because um they just start shit and they're already quick into uh the branding and all that right so when i started it i just wanted to to, to do something during the pandemic right uh we were closed i needed something that to get me out of my 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 mental struggles and once the world started opening up i i, I did not invest in any shit i was recording from my phone on the anchor app before uh, as anchor became spotify for podcasters or whatever it is right now but I was recording through there. I was self-editing everything. I was like, I'm not going to invest until I see it's something I actually want to keep doing. So once the world opened up and I was still back to my nine, uh, uh, nine to five job, I actually I worked retail. So I had crappy hours, you know, morning, nights, evenings, whatever. Yeah. And then still wanting to to record and edit and put it out on time and attend events and conferences. That's when I knew, okay, now I really love this. I'm interested in it. Now let's invest. That's why when, when they suggested for me to rebrand, if I was doing it for fun, I wasn't going to bother rebranding. Like, why the fuck would I rebrand if I'm just doing it for fun? And, just, you know, like, that's a waste of money. So... Take your time with first knowing if you actually love something before you actually put so much strength into that. That's what I'll, I'll also tell my, my, my 2020 self, like all these little things that we worry about, wait for them for us to. Yeah, I, I, uh, I agree with that. I think th those are all great statements to make because I mean, it is, it's what you learn a along the journey. Right. And you know, the things you do, the, the sacrifices you make, the time you put into it, but it pays off at the end of the day. So Basically, for anybody listening to us right now, if you are kind of in the in the very beginning stages of starting a podcast or still debating, like, should I do it? Should I not? 
I mean, I can tell you from from both of us, and if you've already listened to what Paul has been saying, is just start it, just do it. Don't overthink it. Just freaking do it. Like you don't need a ton of fancy equipment, as Paul just said. You do it on your phone, man. Like that's that's all you really need at the end of the day. If you've got something to say, stories to tell, questions to ask, conversations to have, just do it. Just get it out because you will get better as you go along. It's that's a guarantee. That is one guarantee is you will get better as you go along. So. Don't wait. Just do it. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, then stop doing it. <laughs> I mean, really, it's, it's that easy. It's that easy. So how has podcasting, four years into it, how has it changed your life? Like, seriously, like, what have the changes that you have felt from being a podcaster? Oh, my God. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I always knew I was a very confident person. But um, podcasting brought a whole different confidence in me. I don't know. I don't even know how to to explain it because um, I and whenever I say this, people people laugh. But I am genuinely a shy person. Like you see, when I, when I'm when somebody is looking at me, or this even when I started podcasting, I wasn't doing videos because right, I can talk. Like talking is not an issue. But when people are looking at me, I feel like. I start blushing and laughing and doing spaces and losing my track. But um, podcast is somehow is that for me because I've spoken on stages. Uh, who knew I'd be little old me would be a speaker, right? Yeah. <laughs> I've spoken on stages. I've won a community hero award. I've attended conferences that I I am so known out of this world that I'm like, what the hell did I do? And I remember the first time I went to Podfest in 2022 after attending it in virtually. And I go to this booth and I'm introducing myself, talking to the guy. The next guy on the next booth, he ha- he hears me and he comes and he's like, did you say you are the host of Talk Show with me? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh my God, nice to meet you. I've been waiting to meet you. And that was just like, uh, wait, somebody was literally waiting to meet to the host of Talk Show with me. And, and right now we're collaborating. He's actually making a jingle for Talk Show with It's called Mark Mayer, and he has a podcasting music uh, studio. Nice. He makes intros and outros. So the connections it has brought, the networking. Um, I, I never saw myself at moderator panel. I got to moderate a panel. I've never seen myself being a moderator in in, in anywhere. I've been moderators in different clubhouse rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, I have hosted uh, uh, podcasting events. I am working on my own personal business because of the strength and the tools that I get from podcasting daily right. and connect. So <laughs> it, 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 it has really changed my entire life. Like it started with the confidence and, and the trust in myself. Like even though sometimes, you know, you, you believe in yourself, you know, you have it in you. But there are people who have been seeing me from year one of my journey in, in podcasting in 2020 to now and where. That's why I love attending these conferences where when they see me, they see my growth. And it's like that assurance that you need. Like, yo, you remember the last time when we were here, you were at this. Look at all this shit that you've been able to do. So it's really the confidence that has built in that has made me be able to do all these things and and more that I'm planning on doing. I'm finally finalizing my book that I've been talking about writing a book since I was in high school, but never doing it. And right. it took podcasting to actually give me the final push. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's wonderful. I mean, truly, I mean, it, it's uh, it's amazing how something like that, like happens and kind of sp- you know, gives you the spark, you know, lights the fuse basically and is the catalyst to get you to where you honestly were probably always meant to be, but it's always those things in life that kind of give you that push, you know, and, and for you, it was podcasting. And I, I think you made a lot of great points there is that, yeah, as a podcaster, uh, you do, you, you do find a certain confidence in, in talking to people, um, how to carry yourself, how, you know, and just how to like, be social in that way, right? Because, you know, it's always about like asking questions, you know, learn, ask questions about people, don't make it about yourself. And, and I think as a podcast that really teaches you how to do that and how to focus and be, be an active listener, learn and listen about other people's stories. 
and then be able to share those stories and experiences with each other. And I think that's a really cool thing. And the fact too, and I like that it, you're saying too, that it also opened up that opportunity to be, you know, you're now speaking, right? You're, you're on stages. Like that's amazing. Like uh, there's a lot of people out there that would like to be doing that and just are still in that, like, should I, shouldn't I, how do I do it? I would like to do it. How do I even do it? You know, there's, there's a lot of folks out there that are sort of on the fence and, and wanting to do those types of things. But, you know, here you are, like basically something when you when you go back and you listen to episode one of your show, right, your coronavirus Cardi B in 2020. But look where it's taking you now. Right. Did you think that in 2020 you'd be on stages like talking, going to podcast fests and, you know, people coming up to you and, and asking you for advice? Right. Isn't that isn't it great to be able to share your experience with others you know isn't that just awesome oh my god it's so uh fucking unbelievable and by the way i also want uh, I, I also am a guinness world record holder because of podcasting so but, but um i was sitting with chris recently right and we were talking he was asking me paul how long have you been coming to podfest and i was like i actually started coming to podfest uh, 2020, end of 2020 when they did VidFest and then from 2021, 2020 uh, was virtually and then 2022 in person. And um, I remember in 2021, they were looking for speakers and I decided to apply. And I was new at this time. My podcast has started in April. By the way, next week my podcast is going to be four years in. But uh, my podcast... Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. My podcast was started in April and this was in 2020 and this was happening in 2021, February, I believe. So I wasn't even a year in. Mm -hmm. But um, my mindset, what I had in my mindset was that I need to learn, now that I'm getting into this creative world, right? Mm -hmm. I need to learn to hear the words no, because I'm not always going to get the opportunities I want, right? But uh, I know how the creative world is so big. And in my head, the creative world that I'd known was just the artistic side, you know, uh, acting, movie, you know, being actors. So it wasn't. Right. And, and, and we know that's not as a beautiful world as the podcasting world is uh, compared to collaborations and assistance and all that. So in my head, I was like, I need to prepare for the no's. I need to learn how to get no without giving up and everything. So I was applying to speak and I chose case study presentation because I didn't have to be on on camera. I could do a video recording, I mean a recording or anything and submit. And in my head, I was waiting for a no. So I was like, I'm new. It's a five-minute case study. I did it. I didn't even pitch it in my best abilities. I was just like, I want them to know there's this girl called Paul out here, even if I get a no or whatever. And I ended right. up getting a yes. And that's when I was like, fuck shit, now I really have to present. Now, I wasn't prepared for the years, but that was also a, a real realization that it doesn't matter how long you've been doing something if you actually know what you're talking about. Well said. <laughs> well said. I hope, everybody, I hope everybody out there just heard that because uh, Paul just dropped a, a serious gem. I, I'm dead serious, though. I mean, you just you hit the nail on the head with that one. Because in my head, I was concentrating. I've only been less than a year. My podcast is not that produced. I do everything by myself. I'm learning as I'm going and all this. But then I forgot that what I pitched had nothing to do per se with the podcast, but what the topic because they're reading. What do you have to offer? What are you bringing? What's your topic about? How is this helping podcasters? And right. so I got accepted. And that's when I realized that in this world of podcasting, right? Uh, always bet on yourself. And shout out to Dominic who always reminds this us because we sometimes think we are less than, but there are people out there who, who, who are seeing us as more than like, oh my God, I was in podcast this year and somebody was telling everybody, he came to podcast because of me. He started this podcast because of me. He was telling everybody, Paula is my, um, what's the, what's my mentor? And mentor. I'm here, like, I'm looking at myself like, how can I be somebody's mentor? Like, I'm still learning this, but, but somebody else is thinking of me in right. that way because of, it, it, it's not what you know, but how also you 
offer the people around you, what you yeah. offer them, how you help them, how you push them, how you pull them, all those things. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, it's uh, to me, you know, being, you know, my transition from business owner of a video production agency for 20 years into uh, making the decision to become, you know, a coach, advisor, consult, whatever you want to call it. But essentially, you know, my my thing that I really wanted to do was be able to pass on what I learned running my own creative services business and teach other creative service business owners how to also grow their business because I knew the struggles I went through. And I feel like I took the hard way around to doing business. I, I went to school for filmmaking. I didn't know shit about business. I basically you know, for lack of a better word, call, I'm what you guys, you would call an accidental business owner. Like I sort of fell into business because I wanted to get to making music videos and films. And so I figured to do that, you had to do this and so on and so forth. But now I get to share what I learned with other creators and say, Hey, you know, this is how you build a business. This is how you do things. Like I'm able now to share my experience and be a mentor to others and give back. And I think, for you, it's the same thing. It's like you learned how to do something. You put in the time, by the way. You didn't take any shortcuts. Like you put in the time. You learned how to do it. You made all the mistakes. You learned from those mistakes. You got better. And now, you know, not only are you a better podcaster, you know, creator, you know, now it's led to speaking. Like you have now all this experience now that you can share with others that now you can begin to actually you know, even in a way too, like monetize, like you were just talking about, like you're now building a business and that's the way, honestly, listen, everybody, that's the way to do it right there. Like you just gotta have the will, you gotta have the, you gotta have the drive to do it. Um, and yeah, there's going to be always plenty of self doubt along the way. Like, Oh my God, why am I doing this? Why should I be doing this? What, what qualifies me? But then you just got to go back and look like, well, what qualifies me? I don't know. Maybe the five years, the four years I put in learning how to do this qualifies me <laughs> yes 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 and just to add on that take advantage of all the free courses people offer just like chris here i want to say thank you because um <clears throat> recently you did your your course on pricing oh yeah pricing yeah how to price and, yourself and i really needed that because again i am building my consultation farm and i was stuck in a place where I've never built a business, right? But this, these are the things that podcasting yeah. are pushing me to like, nah, again, it's that ego. Like now I'm like, I know my shit. I, I, I you know, I, people need to pray me for this shit right now. But uh, I like uh, other people. I really don't want to be a podcast uh, producer. Oh my, so my, yeah. my business has nothing to do with podcasting, but more on the branding side and, and gifting because I'm very good at sure. branding and merchandise and all that crap. Um, yes, you are. <laughs> All I, that crap, man. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it. <laughs> I, I, I hate to say it, but I just can't help it, you know? <laughs> I'm surrounded with this shit. But, I mean, uh, even your earrings. <laughs> By the way, for anybody just listening, Paul is holding up all the talk shit with peace swag, which, by the way, you can get by uh, heading over to our website <laughs> or following her on social at talk yes, shit with peace. Yes. Yeah. Um, but um, it was such a useful because I didn't know how to uh, how to package, uh, how to price. Sure. Like you know, you, you and, 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 and I don't know if many people are like me when they get into this creative side. This is also something that um, being a podcaster has taught me first. I, I learned how to respect um, influencers because I used to think that shit was so easy until I started getting into podcasting and having to do my own my right. own shit. So y'all influencers, kudos to y'all. And and for to to get to where you are, you have a team that produces amazing things. That means you've earned it. You deserve it. Like don't let nobody mm -hmm. tell you shit. Because once I'm getting paid, I'm getting a whole team. Because fuck this thing in by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you on that. I'm still I'm still trying to get a team. <laughs> and second is that um how. I, I didn't realize how creative I was because when you think about creative people, you think about these artists, the painters, the, you know, you don't really think how you as a podcaster, you already are create, uh, a content creator because you have to come up with topics. You have to produce them. You have to 
to talk about them, you have to share them. That's content you're, you're creating. So you're yeah. already a content creator. So um, it, it, it took me a hard, a hard time realizing that, yo, now I'm nearly in this creative spot, right? And, and, and most of us creatives, we really don't know how to put the right price because is it too much? Is it too less? Is it worth it? it, it, right. it, it, it like, you know, will somebody yeah. actually pay for it? Like, right. you know, and, and people out there have a tendency of making content creators feel like they're asking for too much, yet they will go pay these big businesses, whatever they ask, for something so stupid and, yep. and ugly as fuck. But, but because... The content creator is a nobody. Yeah. They don't deserve how much they're asking for. So mm -hmm. there's always that part of... It's the game. I, yeah. So that class was like, oh, I needed this. I, yeah. I, I, I'm still struggling because I'm still working on packaging. To still, but it was a, a right entry to, to where I fit out. So thank you for that course. It, You're it, welcome. It really was... I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad that yeah. helped. I'm really... No, seriously, I'm glad. I'm glad that helped because... Yeah, I'm with you. It, it's not easy to do, and especially when you don't know how to put a value on your own self worth, which seems weird. You're like, oh, you know, but but like I said, it always comes down to well, what is your experience? What is your knowledge? Like, how much time did you spend accruing that? Like, that's all an investment that you made, and that is worth something because somebody else didn't make that investment, which is why they want to work with you or hire mm -hmm. you because they need knowledge, they need access to what it is you do, and that's worth something. Otherwise, you know, they could go put in the, the required, you know, five to 10 years of, of learning how to do something, you know? So it's, uh, it's definitely a thing. And I know creators struggle with it because listen, like me, I went to school for filmmaking. I didn't go to school for business. Like I learned business trial by fire, made a ton of mistakes, lots of mistakes and learn from them. And that's how I learned how to do business. And for most other creatives, that's exactly it. Like they're doing their thing, they're creating, but business is like not something that people are super familiar with doing. And when it comes to, well, I'll just sell my services. You don't know what to do. You don't know where to start. You don't know how to deal with clients. You don't know how to price yourself. Like it's it's a cascade of things, and everybody's gonna make mistakes because that's how you learn and get better. But the thing is, is there's people like me. There's people like you out there that. We're here to help. We're here to knowledge. Yes, we have free stuff, but not everything's free and you yeah. have to pay a little bit. So, yeah. you know, and that's where, you know, people like us come in to to help everybody out there to 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 be better, to help them with their game and cut that time down, you know, cut that cut that learning. So curve true. Down. Yeah. So true. And I just wanna say this is me giving you my free consultation from from um, my, my new business is called Rap Shit with P. You see, Paul, I just like sticking with shit with P, shit with P. I so, love it. <laughs> and Rap Shit with P, we're going to tell you to to hashtag that accidental business uh, owner and put it on a match. Because I wear a t-shirt that says accidental business owner. Because most of us are accidental business A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But the you point gotta, is that gotta, stay there forever. <laughs> You gotta add that to your match. <laughs> I really should. You're right. I should make a. I should do a, an accidental <laughs> business owner. You know, I was a former accidental business owner. Or I am an actual business owner. You know, that, that, I, I, I I I am accidental right now until I, until I actually my business starts making money. Then I'll be, I, I'll feel like I, I already <laughs> business owner. But you gotta yeah. start somewhere. You gotta start gotta somewhere. start somewhere. No, you absolutely have to start somewhere, and that's the hardest. The hardest part is always starting. You know, but just start and believe me, you will learn as you go. Like, like we all have, we all have. And, you know, you can look at any successful business person out there. I mean, creator, any of it. And they all have, everybody starts the same way, man. They all start the same way. Their origin stories are always like, Hey, I just decided to do this. You know, I, I, or I, I a friend of mine and somehow I got involved and boom, I was so I mean, if you really dig deep on everybody's stories, you'll find everybody shares sort of sort of a common bond and, and similar theme there. But um, I do want to, before we wrap it up, I do want to talk a little bit more about the actual podcast um, because I do want to make a distinction here, or at least hear it from you. Like, do you consider yourself a mental health podcast or do you just like, is that what you consider yourself or are you more than that? So I have a hard time with that. You know, when I started... Okay. I really started as a mental health podcast because the first two um, 
prisons, I believe two or three were mm. all mental health. Like I had my sister talk about postpartum in there. I had my brother talk about his drug overdose. I had people who survived cancer. So it was really mental health centered. Mm-hmm. And um, right now, like we do talk about mental health, but we also, we mostly talk about the creative journeys because um, what I realized was I, right now I'm jobless. Uh, I, I'm still looking for a job, but when I had a job, uh, it was still paycheck to paycheck while I was still trying to build this dream. And Wait, I you, would... mean, you mean podcasting doesn't make you millions of dollars? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm rich, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> um, make it rain. But, um, so it, it's this assumption that I would hear a lot of people who um, the excuse they use in not starting to build whatever they are is I don't have money mm-hmm. or I can't afford it. But then uh, when it's time to go to brunch on Sundays and pop the champagne, you have money. When it times to buy that tele telefoil bag that just dropped for four hundred bucks, right. you have money, you know, you're on the wait list. You know, so um I, I, I wanted to change people's mindsets on all these creators that you're seeing. They didn't start with money. Half of them are still like me. I am building while paycheck to paycheck. I'm just choosing right. like, okay. In this paycheck, we're going to pay these bills, this 200 instead of Uber eating this week. Yeah. We're going to get groceries and then we're going to put this towards talk shit with P. And this towards this. You got to do it slowly, right? That's sure. why I tell people, don't wait to do everything by one time. Budget. Like, oh, this month I have this. We're going to get into an outro fixed. And then next month or even next year, we'll get a new logo or something. Like, you know, you, you got to work on yeah. it. But... um. Having no money, that was an excuse that I hated hearing. Yes, there are some people who are lucky because um, they're way older. They have their savings. They have their 401k. Some people have lots of money. They, they, they did well in corporate. Some of us were not in corporate. We're on a different route. Some of us, but it can still be done. So, And, and also, I am that person who hates when people wait for somebody to finally make it, you know, like, oh, now Paula right. is being interviewed by Oprah. And now everybody's going to say, oh, I know Paula. I went to school with Paula. I saw Paula doing the dancing. But right now when I'm doing it, where y'all? Quiet, silent. So I also wanted to give those creatives their flowers. Like, yo, it's not hard being a creative, being building your brand, building your business, working on your craft, that shit is a lonely journey. It takes a lot out of you. And that's where also the mental health aspect comes. So I want to give you your flowers, but also I want to hear how you deal with your mental health struggles while you're going through this. But mostly, so I want your uh, creative journey so that the person who's listening, thinking like, oh, I don't have money, so I can't start. They can hear like, oh, shit. He literally, this is the framework he did. He was doing this. He was hustling this way. Right. He was taking internships because people bitch on internships. Oh, why should I do something for free? But you're getting the skills. You're learning free skills that if you had to go to school, you'd pay more and be in a class full of other people while here you're getting one-on-one from somebody who's actually doing it. And, and you know, so I just wanted to share this framework. So I don't know if I... I really consider it as much mental like f- compared to my first three seasons because mm-hmm. those were deep mental health stories. And this is more creative, but also we incorporate mental health right. in it. So- <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, listen, I think that... Uh, this is what this is yeah. why I don't apply for awards because I don't know what category <laughs> my podcast belongs to, right? <laughs> It's 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 it's, an, it's a talk shit category. They just need to create a new category. They, like, they need to create a category for me because yeah. every time I go down trying to look at my, I'm <laughs> like wellness, education, right? Hey, right, mental health. Right? It, it's I, I right. really don't know. Maybe Chat GPT needs to come uh, to, to help me figure out category. <laughs> yeah, just just feed all your episodes in the Chat GPT and be like, uh. You know what? What are you? What genre should I be? <laughs> what, oh, what should I? What yeah. kind of podcast should I be? 
all the listeners, say so all listeners, and go go check it out and tell me what category or genre do you think talk show with him belongs to? And the best yeah. answer will get a one of a kind talk show with him merchandise. I'm just saying. Whoa, one of a kind. One of a kind. Custom. You, you know, we we've been working on our merchandise and and, and we uh we we premiered some of them this year at Podfest, the new yeah. ones. So right now, most of them, the top shit we pay merchandise are not available to buy. Nobody has them. People are being gifted, like specifically you're being picked and, and getting. Well, I know that there are some people who I have in mind that I want to send, but you know, the funds are not funding right now. I so so shit is on hold. Yeah. But, but the plan is to, to kind of surprise a few people with some much before we actually. Right put them out on the streets and, and, and we're kind of working on new shit. So if you end up finding me a category or a genre that's amazing, you might just get yourself a one-of-a-kind match. I'm just saying. She's just saying. She's just saying, folks. She's putting it out there, putting it out there. And by the way, you know, if you guys are looking to sponsor a really amazing podcast, there's actually two right here. You can sponsor this one and you can sponsor. You can actually do a twofer. So, you know? A twofer. You can sponsor two <laughs> two podcasts for the price of what? And one. <laughs> And we will some, share. We will share. We'll share. Well, and you'll get some free custom merch too. <laughs> there you we go. We got you covered. And rap shit with me. <laughs> we got you covered. We got you covered. So, all right. Well, Paul, listen. I, I could talk to you for hours. I really I could. Know, we, we could. So we could talk. Fun. We could talk a lot of shit. It'd, it'd be <laughs> great. Um, but uh, but I do want to wrap it up because I, I think that um, as much as people want to hear us keep talking, this just means <laughs> now I have to come on your show and we could talk a bunch of shit on your show. Which you are coming. So, yes. yeah. So we'll do a part two where then I'm on your show and we could just, we could, we could bullshit together. How's that sound? <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. Awesome. Um, right now, shit happens and talk shit with peers on the break, but we do plan on bringing it back either May or June. I'm still, you know, sometimes when I've taken a break from kind of social media yeah. and, and I, I'm enjoying being behind the scenes and doing shit and not worrying about being in front. Right. So I think I'm getting more relaxed and I'm like, oh shit, time is going. This shit <laughs> needs to be coming back. So <laughs> time to get it back. Well, good. I'll be in the next season and that'll, yes, that'll be, yes, that'll, yes. I'll be episode one of the new season. Yes, because <laughs> I, I, I'm the first on yours. So yes, you are. And, and, and by the way, people, for those who don't know, um, Chris has had an invitation to come on my show. Uh, if it's not a season ago, then two seasons ago, he has been having a pending invitation. So it it's is not, a pending invite. So, so it's not that he, I've never invited him. No. <laughs> I like the disclaimer. No, you are absolutely right. It was a pending invite. It was actually for both me and Amanda, who, you know, I, my co-host of my other show, Song Swap Showdown. But uh, Amanda's tough to get a hold of. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to do it. I was trying to be gracious and do it with her but you know what i you know i gotta unless you, I'm just unless, you do it. unless you tell amanda you're doing it on tiktok then maybe then well then maybe, maybe. <laughs> well and she could and she's got it a follow she could go live on tiktok anytime she wants but like, <laughs> we'll have to do a live on on her tiktok <laughs> so she can help us get our, num- our numbers out right right we could all get our numbers up together <laughs> oh that would be amazing so all right paul listen um, like I said, we could talk forever, but I'm going to wrap it up. So real quick though, before we do, uh, just let everybody know once again, where, where can they find, I think at this point you could, we could see, listen and watch talk shit with P anywhere. Right. I mean, anywhere you can podcast it and, and on YouTube as well, if I'm correct, but yes. So mm-hmm. you can find me anywhere by talk shit with P. Um, and then once you get to talk, uh, especially if you are Instagram fan, cause, um, I respond to Instagram DMs quicker than email or any other shit for some reason. But uh, if you are on Instagram and you find Talk Shit with P, you'll be able to find all my other channels and my links and everything. But if you're not on Instagram, uh, you can find me anywhere uh, at Talk Shit with P. And if you want to send me an email in case you, you have a genre for me or category for me, you can email me at TalkShitWithP at gmail.com. If you ever, if you are creative, battling mental health, uh, and you want to share your story, we're always looking for guests. They're always looking for guests, <laughs> but but there's a but, criteria and there's a velvet but, rope. So my your energy must match, and you must you must uh, 
navigate my branding. Otherwise, that's I'm right, sorry, baby. I'm gonna support you and love you from afar. Right. Just don't. <laughs> just don't be like, yo. I want to get on your. I want to get on your show because I got a book to promote. Nah, nah, nah. We're not. We're maybe. I mean, it depends. But like, depends yeah, got, on what. On depends what, the what book you're bringing. Is. Yeah, what are you bringing to the table other than yeah. the book? You know, and right? If get, and if I'm getting a free book, because us, right? I, I, I Signed, free, by the way. I, I love free merchandise and shit. So, and, and I do, and I do amazing unboxing videos. So, if you ever want to send me that shit for me to do an unboxing video for you, you know, <laughs> right? Or you know, listen, sponsorships, man, sponsorships. Always welcome. Always, always. Well, Paul, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, but the first... I have a... Wait, one minute. Oh, before okay. We... All right, all right. Before, before, your... before, before, before I do a whole... Before you do your closing, I have one question for you. Yes. Um, so out of curiosity, because we started with how my growth has from 2020 to now, and you right. actually listened to, to my first episode. When I hear anybody has listened, I eat. But anytime I get bad spot numbers and I see people are still listening to it, I get... Happy inside, like people actually right. go back and so. Share, oh, 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 what did you think? I know it was still in you, and I'm not gonna take anything personally. But this is how we grow, right? And, right. And also hearing because you have had that, and now you have seen my new shit. So yeah. right. Well, I'll, I'll okay. So here, here's my here's what I think, and this is, and I actually give me your honest observation. I'm gonna give you my out because I, I like I, I like the early episodes because I love how it just literally it sounds like you just hit record and and go, and I love that. I freaking love that because I'm like literally like, boom, record, stream of consciousness shows out. <laughs> I'm like, this is amazing. Like this is literally just like. Uh, lightning in a bottle, and I, I love that kind of stuff, man. I love it, but but I will say, but I love the growth now because you can see now as you have guests on, like the conversations you get in, and it sounds a little less now like it's just a stream of consciousness. But I like more of the conversations you're having with people, especially in your later episodes, because the conversations are good. They're deep, and they they go to places. And I think you have a very good way of getting people to open up and talk, especially about serious issues that. You know, quite frankly, some people, and I get it, you know, some people are a little reserved. Some people are embarrassed. Some people don't want to shit. Some people get really up. I understand it. It's personal stuff. But I think you've got a really good way with getting people to open up and kind of share and trust you in that way. And I think it makes for great content. And quite frankly, you know, other people need to hear that. So they feel like, so they feel like they're not alone in their struggle that they're going through. So kudos to you on doing that because it's not easy to do that. So, uh, and I think you present it in a, in a, and this isn't just kissing your ass. I mean, honestly, I think you present it in a really, a really honest and authentic way that, you know, most people, you know, need to hear and, and quite frankly, they absolutely need to hear it. So, you know, that, that's my honest assessment as opposed to you like, you know, hitting record recording <laughs> some Cardi B shit going on. <laughs> Thank you so much. And, but, and but that stuff was fun though too. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cutting on any of that. I, I thought I... it was hilarious. I swear, I think the last time I did that was like uh, my first season where I also went skydiving on my birthday and I came back, I was still high in the I, I, I adrenaline yeah, and the I was drinking and... and I recorded it with my voice all gone and I said, I'm not editing, I'm not listening it, I'm just putting it out. Right. Those were good times. I kind of miss those just going wrong and shit. But um, I also like how you say, because a lot of people do, one of the biggest thing I get when people leave my podcast is, Oh my God, I can't believe I shared that on your podcast. Oh my God, I can't believe you made me talk about that. So to know that I actually do make people feel comfortable into opening up about shit that they never thought they would ever share on. That's important. So that makes me happy. So thank you. Now you can go ahead and yeah. close this damn shit. All right. Well, yeah. Well, before before I close, one last thing is, yo, when am I going to do some good cushion alcohol with you and we karaoke? When is that <laughs> happening? <laughs> Um, you know, we are, we are having, because you didn't come to Portfest. I, I, I swear, didn't, know. I swear this, uh, I received a text message, right? Because uh, my phone was acting up at Portfest. So when I came back, I was trying to save everybody's number. So um, this lady responded to me who she was. Then later she was like, I have never been in a conference where somebody is offering me a ga uh, uh, to to have a gummy uh, uh, a weed gummy with me. I'm sorry I didn't partake this time, but next year, please let's do it. <laughs> I was literally doing this like opera. You get one. You get one. You get... <laughs> but um, Love you it. know, uh, 
uh, empowered podcasting uh, meetup is happening in June and it's my birthday weekend because my birthday is 29 June, baby. And I'll so, be there. I'll be there. Uh, say no good cushion alcohol. <laughs> oh, here we go. Good kush, alcohol, and some, <laughs> some, and some karaoke. <laughs> and shout out to Mopa who decided to sponsor the empowered podcasting. There you go. In person event. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be good. That's going to be a good time. So if you haven't gotten your ticket yet, by the way, for Empowered Podcasting, as Are of this speaking? recording, I am. Nice. I am. Oh, wait. Yes. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good one. Get your tickets, by the way. Get your I'm, tickets now. And come hang out with me. I'm literally going, that's the reason I didn't apply to speak because I was like, speaking is on Saturday and Saturday is my birthday. I do not want to be worried about being on stage. I'm literally coming to have a fucking good time. Good. Well, that's great, and I I'm and I I'm and I will have a good time with you. So we're 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 gonna we're gonna rip it up. <laughs> we're gonna I'm rip it, rip it up. Yeah, <laughs> rip it up. So all right. Well, listen, this is awesome. Thank you for coming on. I'm glad we talked a ton of shit. This is great. This is perfect. I'm so glad this is my episode kicking off my brand new, uh, brand new rebrand of the podcast now called Creative Frequencies, formerly known as Rocket Live. This Rocket! is the perfect. This is the perfect kind of episode I want to kick this off. So thank you, Paula. No, seriously, this is this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on, sharing, talking about uh, the show, where you're at, where the future is, sharing your insights and experience. Really appreciate it. I'm hoping everybody out there uh, gets inspired, gets motivated, and please uh, take Paula up on her uh, invite to 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 talk to her because honestly, Paula's got a lot of great, a lot of great advice and. Check out Talk Shit with P anywhere you get podcasts and also on YouTube. And, of course, you can listen to Creative Frequencies anywhere you get podcasts and also on YouTube as well. And we will see you guys next time. Rock it. Yeah.